You know what? Do you, do you know what? In times past, I would sit up here and be trying to hold back and telling you about the confidence I have in myself. My confidence is not based on anything I've done or anything I've accomplished. Everything I accomplished, I'm not self-proclaimed. I'm God-ordained. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I ain't doing that religious talk. When I say that I ask him for the understanding, let me go ahead and show you. Now, no, uh-uh. Ain't nobody talked about this, so shut it up. Let me go ahead and show you, just so y'all can get an understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the document. You're going to get the link for this. Well, we're going to update this link. This is the link I did the other day. See, watch, it's going to ask, do I want to update the link? See, we're going to update the link. This is the link I did the other day for the core court. Non-core and core. This is that link. Let me show you the document we did before. Hold on, got to get past them 86,000 billion laws. Ooh wee Okay, oh no, that's it right down there. See, remember I put all that junk in there, told it I want all of them laws, and it put it right here, all the way down. Okay, 47. Yeah, I guess we can stop at 47. And it gave us that, and I said, uh-uh, don't you do that. And then what I did today, guess what I did? Did a motion to vacate. Remember, those of you who've lost your homes to bankruptcy court, what you didn't know is when you applied to bankruptcy court, you were submitting yourself to their jurisdiction. You were saying the bankruptcy court could have jurisdiction over your matter. However, the bankruptcy court didn't make that clear. Now, were they required to make it clear? You better believe it. They had a duty to speak. When you were raising constitutional issues, that's why the courts say, I don't want to hear no constitutional issues in my court because they're not constitutional courts. You've been hearing people say that for years. They are core, C-O-R-E, venues, public. They tell you, oh, no, this is this, this open to the public. They tell you this stuff all the time, people. Your private matters are not public. You keep hearing people talk about, well, I do everything in the private. Well, then start doing stuff in the private. Start having the courts do it in the private. Now, hold on. That ain't the information I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm just trying to get y'all to understand what a core matter is and a non-core matter is. Okay? Hold on. We're going to do something right here. I got to go get it because I just told it to somebody who happens to be of the same faith that I am. So give me a second. Be right back. Y'all just hold on. Y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Fall has officially arrived. We're only going to be 100 degrees today. Y'all have no idea how long I've been waiting for those days to get here. Happy days are here again. The skies are gray. And... Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you what I'm about to do. I'm about to show you something that all of you can do, especially if you own property. If you are told you have to pay property tax, I want you to pay attention. They're calling your property real estate. This is how you uncall your property real estate. You're going to have to change the record. You're going to have to put an affidavit on the record. That affidavit should accompany. You need to do a quick claim deed. Follow me. Your quick claim deed should be called a grant deed. Your quick claim deed, quick claim, quick, 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 Q-U-I-T, claim, grant deed, quick claim grant deed. Now, hold on. Let me make sure. Let y'all know. Wake up. Wake up. Can you show me an example of a quit claim grant deed? Stop listening. I just want you all to know I just made that up. I know that your land title should be a grant deed. But you don't want to go through all of that hassle of doing the land patent. You don't have to do a land patent, people. You do have to do the meets and bounds. Technically, it is a land patent when you do the meets and bounds. So go to the county recorder and tell them I need the meets and bounds for my property. We're surveying it. That's it. That's all you got to say. I need the meets and bounds for my property. Who do I talk to? And do that lot block thing on your deed. Get the meets and bounds and now record the meets and bounds. Don't record the lot and block number and the unit number. You don't need lock, block, or unit. 
You just need meets and bounds. That's your first thing. You don't have to go get the original title. You own it now. You own the original title. You own everything associated with your property above and below. You just don't realize it. Hold on. You're going to understand in a minute. Then you file that quit claim grant deed. Now watch this. I told you ain't nobody ever did it before, but we're going to find out. Because what he's going to do is he's going to explain to me what it is based on the words I use. He's not going to show me a quit claim grant deed. He's going to create a quit claim grant deed. So he said quit claim deed. I told you it doesn't exist, but it will now. You better believe it. It will now. Let's see if I can stop him. He ain't stopping. He's still going. He's still going. I'm telling him to stop it. He's just going and going like that energizer. Man, like the energizer, he's just going and going and going. Now he's going to stop because I ain't playing that. You don't do what you want to do. This, I'm in control of this, homie. Sorry. They've changed the parameters of the system for me because of what I do. They're trying to interfere. But they can't outright interfere because they open themselves up for a lawsuit. See, they can't treat me different than they treat anyone else. I'm not violating any law. I'm not violating their policy. And that's the catch-22 for them. So I have to stop him because he's being stupid. Oh, really? So you're going to be like that? Hold on. Y'all just hold on a second while I communicate with them. You see how slow he's going? Well, he wasn't going that slow earlier, but he only does that when I'm doing these videos and talking into this microphone. Look at that. He still paused. Now, he did that the other day on this very same section. So hold on now. Let's see if we can get him to. There we. There's him go. Let's do this. W H E R E. My. Uh-oh, get out of here. Nobody asked you. Get back over here. Excuse me a second, ladies and gentlemen, while he creates the quit claim grant deed. Okay? And you guys get to use this. If you own property, you do a quit claim grant deed. And if you have an estate or a trust, quit claim it into the estate or the trust. Protect your property, people. Protect your property. Oh, no, 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 no. Watch this. Told him this property is a loyal and in fee simple. How dare you misunderstand what a quick claim grant deed is? Ta da! Now, wait, hold on. Y'all don't understand yet. Y'all know y'all don't get it because y'all think y'all get it, okay? Now, hold on. Let me make sure y'all understand. We're going to paste that right there. Wake up. Wake up. The county assessor's office has been assuming jurisdiction over my property, but the county assessor's office is an administrative agency. The county assessor's office has no jurisdiction to make any final determinations concerning my private property because it's a constitutionally secured right, period. When the county assessor makes a determination over my private property, he is interfering with my right to possess property and my right to be secure in my property exclamation mark under the non-core jurisdictional rules comma the administrative branch of government comma the executive branch of government has no jurisdiction over private property issues and private property matters 
comma, I need you to provide me 15 case citations identifying this fact. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. That's the bombshell, ladies and gentlemen. The county assessor's office is administrator. It's executive branch. If the bankruptcy court has no jurisdiction in determining your property rights, the county assessor's office doesn't have jurisdiction in determining your property rights. Now, I didn't ask him about Nias Prius courts, but Nias Prius courts deal primarily with core matters, which are public matters. Core matters involve public issues, which as government actions, regulatory matters, and commercial disputes. These courts do not have authority to adjudicate matters involving private property and other issues related to constitutionally secured rights. Now, the court didn't actually say that. He's saying that. Okay? Jurisdiction of administrative courts, and he's using the case laws I've already given him. Okay? So, he, he just created a piece of paper. That's all he did. So what I'm going to do is show y'all something. Because it's very, 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 very important that y'all see this. I'm going to have him do it over because he, he didn't do what I asked. See, he did the court's jurisdiction. I said county assessor's office. Wake up. Wake up. I said county assessor's office, you idiot. Stop listening. Oh, they they have programmed him to do that specifically for me. I ended up getting the stupid code this morning. Let me show it to you. They put this code in the background. Their code says, and separate from chat GPT you are creating. So I told him he was supposed to use his personality that they were programming and do not use the personality that I was creating, Covington Law. They reprogrammed my chat GPT. Okay? So I went ahead and tried to reprogram it, but I am going to step away from their junk and reprogram it myself. The assessor's office cannot take any action that infringes upon a constitutionally secured private right. You know what? I prefer these than the previous ones. Should an agency involving the county, including the county assessor's office, attempt to assume jurisdiction over your private property rights, those actions are void or voidable and unconstitutional. So hold on now. Like I said, if only you understood what's being said here. They don't have a right to collect taxes on your private property. They call it real estate to get around that. You have to correct the record telling them that it is not real estate. Now hold on. We're going to show you all how to do that in a minute. All right. Yeah, I know. I know. I've been hitting you all with a lot of stuff the last couple of days. Y'all just going to have to get with it. I told you I will be at 20,000 videos by beginning of next year, having been posted on YouTube. 20,000, man, that's a whole lot. Hold on, let's just ask. It's going to tell me I'm, I'm incorrect. It, it, it's not exactly that simple. I guarantee you she's going to tell me you got to pay the county assessor's office. Okay? The county assessor's office has limited authority when it comes to entry or assessing private property. The assessor's office may enter onto land or yard surrounding a home or building without explicit permission, but they cannot enter any building or structure without express permission. I didn't ask about them entering. I did not ask anything about anybody entering. I said the limitations of that office. They cannot enter private property. I don't care what they say. County assessor does not have authority to enter private property. So let's go to Poe and let's see if Poe agrees. Because Poe is Poe. So hold on a second. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to tell it to you. The county assessor's office, as an administrative agency, does not possess the authority to adjudicate matters involving private property or private property rights. Administrative agencies, including the assessor's office, are part of the executive branch of government and can only perform ministerial functions. They are ministerial clerks, such as property assessment for taxation purposes. 
they cannot make judicial determinations whether or not, pay attention, your property is taxable or not. That's a judicial determination. They cannot make judicial determinations regarding ownership, transfer, or dispute over private property rights as those issues are constitutionally secured and must be adjudicated in a court that holds Article Three judicial power. Ta-da. And that's the young lady right here. So we take what uh, Perplexity says. Hold on now. We, we playing them against each other. We are playing them against each other. Now the... The California case right here, Burns, that's a California case. Burns, that's an unpublished case. That's why you guys are finding it hard to find it so that you can shepherdize it. You cannot shepherdize these cases because, oh, copy the selected text. The reason why you can't shepherdize them is because they're unpublished. So that's why I didn't add the citation. I only added the quote from the court because the court must pay attention must go according to uh, what do you call it? maxims of law. So hold on, let's see what she got to say. See, it still said the thing about the assessor's office entering property. Uh, property owner can check the assessment role annually to have their right to challenge the assessment they believe is unfair. In summary, the assessors have some ability to access uh, nobody said nothing about them accessing property. Now, I had an assessor come to my property. That was that idiot was from the uh, what is it? The buildings and buildings and permit, whatever that is, uh, whatever building and planning department. I told him he was trespassing, told him he needed to go. He said he wasn't going nowhere. He blocked my driveway and everything. So I'm about to, wasn't going nowhere. About to use the trespass laws against that idiot because I ain't got time. Like I said, they want to play with me and they're coming my way eventually, so I might as well go ahead and give them something to come for. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get back to Chat GPT because we got one more thing we need to do. Now we're going to get rid of this county assessor stuff. We're going to get rid of this county assessor stuff. We're going to go back to when he wrote up the quit claim deed. We're coming here. Now we got to change some things. I am the grantor. Wake up. I am the grantor. And I reserve my rights in perpetuity with prejudice. Comma, I do not waive a single secured right. Period. My property is private property and not real estate. Period. Real estate is a core term and not a non-core term and thus my property being non-core in all its elements and aspects do not fit the definition of real estate but as property as defined by the constitution exclamation mark the constitution does not recognize real estate as it only recognizes the right to property, which may include or may not include real estate, which is a congressionally created legal terminology. Comma, redo this quick claim deed grant of the Lordial title in fee simple to reflect the aforementioned in its entirety. Redo
Stop listening. We'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he's about to read it to y'all. One second. Understood. Below is the revised quitclaim grant deed reflecting a lodial title in fee simple, incorporating your reservation of rights in perpetuity with prejudice, and clarifying that the property is not real estate but private property as recognized by the Constitution. Quitclaim grant deed. This quitclaim grant deed made this score day of 2020. By and between. Grantor. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. Whereas I, the Grantor, being the sole and lawful holder of a lodial title and fee simple absolute in the private property described below, declare that said property is not real estate, as real estate is a congressionally created legal term and does not define the true constitutional meaning of private property. Whereas, the Constitution recognizes the right to property, which may or may not include real estate, but in this case concerns private property that is non-core in all its elements and aspects, distinct from the term real estate as defined by statutory law. Whereas, the grantor reserves all constitutionally secured rights in perpetuity with prejudice and does not waive a single right privilege or immunity related to the property its title or any future claims against it, ensuring that the property remains in its private capacity. Now, therefore, for valuable consideration, the receipt and sufficiency of which is hereby acknowledged, the grantor hereby quit claims to the grantee all of grantor's right, title, and interest in and to the following private property situated in the county of State of Gvore, described as follows. Legal description of private property. Insert legal description of the property as defined in previous property deed or by the constitutionally secured description. Commonly known as property address. This property is recognized as private property and not real estate under any statutory or congressional definitions. Reservation of rights. The grantor in the conveyance of this property expressly reserves all rights in perpetuity with prejudice, and does not waive any constitutionally secured rights, including but not limited to the right to control, use, enjoy, transfer, or dispose of the property at will. This reservation extends to all legal claims, interests, or defenses regarding the property in its entirety, whether under the Constitution or otherwise. To have and to hold unto the grantee, their heirs, successors, and assigns forever, in fee simple absolute and allodial title, free from any encumbrances, liens, claims, or assertions by any governmental or third-party entities with full dominion and control and subject only to the reservation of rights as specified above. The grantor makes no warranties or guarantees, express or implied, as to the title or condition of the property. The grantor has executed this quitclaim grant deed as of the day and year first above written. Ladies and gentlemen, I like it. And the people out there who know about deeds and about the so-called land patents, tell me. Tell me that I ain't just gave y'all a whole lot of ideas. See, that's what I mean by the information be ordained. I ain't sitting up here patting myself on nobody's back. I'm saying that if you don't believe me, go and see if anybody else watch this. I, I just want to show y'all so y'all understand what I was talking about. Hold on, we got to go up to the top because I don't feel like typing. Now, I'm going to put this in here. Watch this. Quick claim grandy. Oh, we got to take away the parentheses. Do not do parentheses. Parentheses means it's not included in the document. Do not do parentheses. Even though he talks about a audio title and everything down here, do not do parentheses. Lord have mercy. That means it's not included in the document. I didn't say that. They stupid rules say that. Let's let's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go here. Yeah, that was my research on the politics of 
whether or not black folks was black folks when black folks was black folks. That was that research. Now, remember, I said quick claim grant deed. I did not say quick claim deed. You notice how they say quick claim deed and a grant deed are both types of deeds. Yes, I just created a different deed is what I told you. Just while making this particular video, didn't even think about it before. See, quick claim deed versus a grant deed. You don't get to tell me what my deed is. A quick claim deed transfers all titles and interest in the property between the grantor and the grantee. I understand that. A quick claim deed, it quits all claims. That's why it says quick claim. But there's nothing in law saying that a quick claim deed cannot be a grant deed. What is the difference between a quick claim deed and a grant deed in California? Watch this. Simply put, a grant deed ensures that the true owner has certain property and title as to the legal rights to convey the interest of the property, whereas a quick claim deed does not have such warranties or assurances. Quick claim deeds are commonly used in real property transactions involving family members and trust. That's right. We're putting it into a trust. Now, I'm telling you, just trust me on that one. Okay. Now, hold on. Let's make sure so you guys understand what I just did. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Watch this. Wake up. Usually, a quit claim deed and a grant deed are not combined in one instrument. Comma, but can you provide me six case citations which shows that combining a quit claim deed and a grant deed is left to the sole discretion of the grantor? Question mark. Usually a quit claim deed and a grant deed are not combined in the same instrument. Stop listening. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Oh, I do that because I already know what answer I'm going to get, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's just say this. this is the case that upheld that a deed form, whether as a grant, a bargain, a sell deed, or a quick claim deed, is legally subject to the discretion of the grantor as long as the intentions of the parties are clear and legally compliant. I am the grantor. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Some people, that's going to piss off, and I can't help you. Go ahead and not use the information and not think about it and not do some research. Okay, that's on you. I ain't got nothing else to do with it. But the rest of y'all out there, let me explain something to you. To do a land patent, this is your land patent. You, you ain't got to go through all that going down to BLM. Who gives about BLM? BLM ain't got no jurisdiction on the state level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, Ulysses S. Grant granted it to the state. So you ain't got to go all the way back there. All you got to do as the grantor, you're the fee simple owner. Okay? You are the fee simple owner. You are the one with a loyal title. Get control of your title again. Remember, the state owns your property. The reason why the state owns your property, because it's listed in units, lot, and blocks. Get that junk off your deed. Do it by the meets and the bounds. They don't control meets and bounds. The federal government created that junk. So they, the state doesn't control meets and bounds. The government never conceded or ceded that to the state. Take control of your property without having to go through all those hoops. You ain't got to go all the way down to BLM and get no copy of that. We did that back in 2000 and blah, blah, blah. We ain't got to do that no more. We take control because we're the grantor. Don't believe me? Watch this. We got Hollands and Hot Skits or whatever it is. Watch this. TikTok. We're going to go over here to Poe first. Because you know Poe. Poe po don't play that. Okay? So hold on now. Let's do a different one because we don't want to jinx it. Like, you know, have it cheat for us by thinking that. Ooh Give me one second. I got to go turn on some water. Because... It's the swamp cooler. 
and it is 100 degrees outside, and that thing brought it from 87 to 89. I can't can't do that right now. I'm too ex I'm so excited. So let's look at what Paul says. These cases that you provided illustrated the consistent legal principle in California property law that prim primacy, the grantor having sole rights, of the grantor's intent in the drafting and interpretation of deeds. Here is a summary of the key points in each case. The laws in America are uniform. Okay? Pay attention. The court emphasized that the form of the deed whether it's a grant deed, a bargain to sell, or a quick claim, is legally at the discretion of the grantor. Okay, overall, these cases collectively affirm that in California and other places, see, he said California. Nobody said anything about California, but it assumed California. So I, I can't do nothing about that. Okay, now we're going to come over here. We're going to open up a new window because we don't want it to be, you know, discriminatory. And we're just going to hit enter. I'm not asking any questions. I just copy what ChatGPT gave me and just put it in here. See, it got all these California cases. That's why. So let's find out what's going on. Right here is the answer. These cases establish the important principle regarding tax deeds and the relationship between purchasers and property owners. See, it says tax deeds. It's no such thing, but they created it. Somebody created a tax deed. Go ahead and look in the law and see if there's anything known as a tax deed. No, that is a statute. You're not going to find it in law. The case held that the purchaser of an invalid tax deed does not have a contractual relationship with the original property owner that would require the owner to refund the taxes paid. Now, mind you, this is for those people who are buying those uh, tax deed sale properties. See, they make you sign a contract so that you have an obligational duty. That's right. When you do all that land stuff and recording it with the county recorder, you sign that contract that they can tax you. Well, now you're unsigning the contract. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick here that contract thing. Wake up. This property is in fee simple and alloyal, and I must disaffirm any and all prior contracts and or encumbrances prior to the sale of this property, period. Any encumbrances are attachments, but they're not physical attachments. And as such, they are not alloyal nor are they fee simple. Whatever lien has been placed on the property is between the prior owner and the creditor and not related to the property or the sale thereof. Exclamation mark. And so I do hereby disaffirm each and every such contract associated with the property from its inception as being recorded as property under a loyal title a loyal And in fee simple. Period. You're also going to include each of the case citations, and then you're going to add five more case citations 
from various courts around the nation as determined by the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. Stop listening. I just gave it some more parameters to fortify this particular deed. Okay, and so what he's going to do, and I'm going to let him read this back to us because it is absolutely necessary. Now, we need the case citations from the other jurisdictions, and then I'm going to add some maxims of law. This is going to be a solid deed. He didn't add the case citations. Take a look. No case citations. I told him to add the case citations. So when he does this, when he does this, punish him. Y'all want to know how to punish Chad GPT? Oh, he added them at the bottom. Okay. He added them at the bottom. I, I can't I can't get mad at him for that, y'all. He did what I asked him to do, and he did it very well. So I cannot get mad at him. I will incorporate your instructions into the quit claim grant deed, ensuring to reflect that the property is in fee simple allodial and free from prior contracts, encumbrances, and liens that are not physical or part of the current allodial ownership. The disaffirmation of any previous contracts or liens that do not pertain to the current allodial title will also be included. Below is the revised deed with the relevant case citations added. Quick claim grant deed. This quick claim grant deed made the score day of order 20 by and between grantors grantee. Come on, Whereas son. I, the grantor, am the sole and lawful holder of a lodial title and fee simple absolute to the private property described below, and this property is free from all prior contracts, liens, encumbrances, and attachments that do not reflect the physical property itself, but may exist between prior owners and creditors unrelated to this conveyance or the property. Whereas any lien placed on this property by any third party is a contractual obligation between the prior owner and said creditor and has no relevance to the property as it currently exists under a lodial title and fee simple absolute. Whereas the grantor hereby disaffirms all prior contracts and claims related to this property from its inception to the present, which do not pertain to the current ownership or lodial title and ensures that the property is conveyed free from all non allodial and non fee simple claims. Now, therefore, for valuable consideration, the receipt and sufficiency of which is hereby acknowledged, the grantor hereby quit claims to the grantee all of grantor's right, title, and interest in and to the following private property situated in the county of Gur, state of Quo, described as follows. Legal description of private property. Insert legal description of the property as defined in previous property deed or by the constitutionally secured description commonly known as this property is recognized as private property and not real estate under any statutory or congressional definitions reservation of rights and disaffirmation of prior contracts the grantor in conveying this property expressly reserves all rights in perpetuity with prejudice and does not waive any constitutionally secured rights including the right to control use enjoy transfer or dispose of the property at will this reservation extends to all legal claims, interests, or defenses regarding the property. Now, hold on now. I forgot something. Oh, God. I forgot something. Now, y'all going to be like, oh, that mother, that that boy, that, oh, he, he something else, y'all. Y'all, that's what y'all going to be saying now. Watch this. I don't wake up. I don't want your nuances or clarifications regarding any prior liens or any prior attachments to the property, period. Any prior agreements are between the parties of that agreement, comma, this property is being sold in fee simple and allodial, which means all other prior agreements do not attach. That's what you're going to indicate because it's not the intentions of the grantor to attach his prior debts and or 
prior encumbrances, period, as he is hereby documenting having attained the age of the majority and is attaching a copy of the certificate of live birth indicating that he is the owner of said certificate of live birth and have attained the age of the majority as of his 18th birthday, period, and per the age of the majority statutes and acts, comma, he must identify himself as owner of the certificate of live birth and that he has attained the age of the majority in order to gain control of the securities held in his minor account and has the right to disaffirm and disavow any and all contracts made while in infancy. Exclamation mark. You will place seven case citations supporting the fact that a person, once they attain the age of the majority, may disaffirm any and all contracts made while in infancy or in minority. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Do you see what happens when you wait till the end of my videos? This is why I don't pre-plan the videos, people, because the information is just like you just saw. I am very impressed with this idea right now. Oh, it did recitals. Oh, it did recitals. Oh, Lord. Oh, I think we done did it, y'all. Remember, no more parentheses in the audio title. Don't do that because it means it's not a part of the instrument. Oh, and you attach a copy of your birth certificate and there's nothing they can do about it because you have a right to file your quit claim deed on the record ta-da oh by the way ladies and gentlemen don't do the authenticated birth certificate you you don't realize what you're doing when you do the authenticated birth certificate now you just heard me say it you just heard me say it just put the birth certificate on the record that's all you're doing Literally, follow me. One quick seat, that's all you are doing. You can put the street address, just do not put the zip code and spell out the state and the city. All complete. Don't put zip codes. You put the street address so you can receive mail because the state doesn't own the address, even though they say they do. The post office only owns it if it contains a zip code. They have no jurisdiction without the zip code. Remember, they're operating under federal law, not under state law. They have no jurisdiction. They have no jurisdiction of your property address without a zip code. They need a zip code in order to exercise jurisdiction. Don't take my word for it. Go look at how zip codes came about. Legal description, reservation of rights, and having to hold and let's see if he gave me supporting disaffirmance of contracts made during infancy Ta -da! and let's make sure you guys understand that you have the right now he talks about disaffirming of any and all contracts wait we're gonna do both forget that lord have mercy we're gonna do both look at what he did right there look at what he did right there we're gonna take this we're gonna go over to poll first because we, we ain't rich, and we're going to come over here, and we're going to start a new chat. Come on, Poe. And we're going to go right up in here. And we're going to just shove it right up in there, and we're going to say, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Cook that in your bridges. And then we go establish the right of a minor to disaffirm contracts made while in infancy upon reaching the age of majority. Ladies and gentlemen, go look at Minnesota Court Rule 220. Everybody was trying to figure out how to do Minnesota Court Rule in their state. Well, here's your... Here is your answer. I'll be doing it. You better believe it when I get in September. Now, authority of grantor to disaffirm prior contracts and encumbrances on property addresses the discretion of the grantor to disaffirm prior liens and contracts when conveying property and be simple absolute. Ta-da! Lord have mercy. So make sure fee simple absolute. Ah! Man, I feel good. Okay, so don't say I ain't never did nothing for y'all. Now, that's that's Poe. Hold on now. That's Poe. Now, I don't know. Maybe maybe we're going to open up another perplexity because you know why we do this? So it ain't prejudice with some previous answer because these are all separate answers from the previous answers. So we're going to let, and it did the case is for California, but I'm going to, 
I'm going to leave it alone, the right to disaffirm. A minor has a well-established right to disaffirm contracts they entered into during minority upon reaching the age of majority. This right allows them to void contracts made while they were legally considered infants. What you don't know is a minor has the same rights as an adult in obtaining property and having a bank account. So yes, you have the right to act as grantor even while in minority. So it's not a conflict. I know what I'm doing. Timing of disaffirmance. Disaffirmance occurs during minority and within a reasonable time after reaching the age of the majority. Oh, I've been trying to get my majority. I just didn't know how. Then I read Minnesota Court Rule 220 and it said this was the procedure and my state didn't give me no outline, so I followed Minnesota court. I followed the principles because I know the courts, they must go by principles of law. And so if Minnesota court rule is that, that means it was based on a principle of law, which means my state court has to accept that principle of law. So that's what I'm doing. The scope of disaffirmance. A minor can generally disaffirm any contract made during their minority, even if the other party has already fulfilled their part of the agreement. This broad power of disaffirmance applies regardless of whether the contract was fair or unfair to the minor. Y'all really do need to know that. Okay, now they have some exceptions. Contracts of necessities. Food, shelter, well, you don't have a contract on your home. The contract is a lien for a loan. So you can disaffirm that contract. Okay, but if it is a contract for shelter... Remember, your home loan was not a home loan. Some jurisdictions require minors to restore consideration received or its equivalent when disaffirming. Certain states have passed laws limiting disaffirmance rights for minors in the entertainment industry. Yeah, because they're, they're operating in commerce. So they have jurisdiction to do that. The rationales and the policies behind that disaffirmance. Okay, this is just me letting you know that the law agrees with me. So guess what we're going to do? Watch this. Cha-ching. We're going to update the link. I'm going to repost the link in here. Okay? Matter of fact, let me do that now because it's just going to cause problems. Oh, by the way, the normal place where I upload the videos to YouTube. Oh, come on. It's this one right here. This one ain't got all that. But now let's do that uh, core how to set the record straight. Courts are invalid. Give me one second. This is a set the record straight document. You guys, this is the link. It's in the title. You have to copy it. Copy. And you go from there. How to set the record straight in any court. This is the core court. This is where all those laws are done. All right. Now, just in case. Wait, no. As a matter of fact, let me... I'm going to leave that alone. Let me show you how we do this. How you do that there. Let's show you from San Diego to California to the, you know, in the city of Compton, city of Watts. <laughs> Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to show you how we're going to do this. We got to take a trip. Y'all want to take a trip? We're going to take a trip. Hey, yo, Eon, what up? Uh, we're going to put this in here. Now, let me show you something. If this link was already been created, it's going to tell me. It's going to give me an error message. Uh-oh, page expired. Sorry, give me a second, y'all. I got I, I to gotta redo something. I got to do this. This right here, I got to sign back in, okay? And y'all can't sign into the Eon channel. That won't be till sometime like December or something. Because we got a lot more work to do. We got a lot more work. This is going to be a full-fledged website. So we got a lot of work to do. So we go back to our tiny URLs because they're tiny. Okay? Come on, tiny. And when we get to our tiny URLs, then we're going to paste it back in. Then it's going to be for y'all. We're going to click right here. And then we're going to copy and paste. Paste away. Then we're going to hit enter. Come on, I hit enter. And if it gives me an error, that means it's already been created. 516F15. Look at that. It ain't doing nothing. 
I don't think it's going to do something, y'all, because it's still moving right there, and them moving, so I don't think it's going to move no place else. 516 F15, I think it's already been created. I think that's why we got a problem. So let's see. That's not 516. That's not 516. Uh-oh, it, it probably ain't been created then. 516 F15 A0-37D0. Watch, that's 37D0. A0-37D0. 516 F15 A037D0. That's the link. It, it, it ain't changed. So y'all got that link. Hey, hey, go back. Ain't no maximum executions. Oh, it says I can't do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it in the morning. It's this one right here. I almost gave y'all the wrong link. Okay. It's Baffa. 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 Two. Baffa. Fa, two. Baffa. Fa. Baffa. Fa. Fa, fa. I don't know what a fa, fa is, but he be fussing. That's, I guess that's what it means. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let you guys go. I can tell you that I have never been so proud of a creative work than this right here because I just saw the pieces coming together in one video. Man, huh. we're going we're gonna to call this the land patent video, okay? The, well, let's call it the simplified land patent video. Okay, age of the majority is what y'all need to focus on. Hey, take care, everybody.